Today on High Now, if you're into experience and amazing food, there's a new restaurant in town, 1938 Indochine. Explore the menu inspired by Southeast Asian street food. Then add these to your foodie bucket list. We're dishing on some of our favorites. Plus, experience the Okinawan Festival at home. What you can expect at the virtual event. This and more, right now on High Now. Weekender. I'm Kanoi Gibson. Aloha, I'm Kainoa Carlson, and it's Labor Day weekend. Yes. It's also a good time to spend some time with some family. Also hit up some great restaurants for some Ono takeout. Yeah, and 1938 Indochine is actually open for takeout, and so we have got a five-course <laughs> chef's tasting menu here in front but of us. But it seems like so much more than that. I know, and yeah. so it's a perfect menu for two. And so here we have menu A, which has Colonial crab cake, Laotian chicken lop, Ooh. morning glory, chop che, Vietnamese pork chop, and it feeds two people. This food is so amazing. I love these little crab cakes. Look how cute oh, those are. beautiful. And you they're all packaged. One? Of course I do. They're all packaged nicely, ready to go. Kanoi has menu A. I've got menu B, and that's going to feature a mushroom soup with egg flour. You've got imperial rolls that are delicious, beautifully made, mm -hmm. nice and crunchy. There's also, for a dessert, there's some homemade strawberry tapioca, Ooh. and also uh, I know a really popular thing is this crazy rice, and you had some experience on how they make I sure did. So they actually have three different um, ways that they cook the rice. They take mm -hmm. out all the moisture, and so whenever they fry it, it gets really crispy. Mm -hmm. And so you get these little, you know, crunchy bits, and you can taste the different layers of rice. It is so good. Okay. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells amazing, right? very fresh. So they're bringing the best of Southeast Asian street food right here to Hawaii. It's so delicious. Now, typically you're supposed to kind of like scoop things into mm -hmm. a bowl and eat it like this. So I've been told. I like it though, but a lot of this stuff for brothers like me is handheld. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you can see, and for sisters like Hanoi. Mm -hmm. Just going with the hands. Now, what I like is that like it has all of those Vietnamese flavors that you're used to, but on wow. a different level. I feel like it's this just- This is really good. It just Imperial roll is fantastic. Burst with flavor, right? Mm. All right. So they're actually open for takeout, I believe, from 5 to 9. And you've got some whiskey in That's front of right. you. You're a whiskey lover like me. You're going to love this. The owners of 1938 Indochine actually went to Kentucky to where they make this whiskey. They bought the entire barrel. The it's whole barrel. The entire barrel. This is authentic Kentucky whiskey. It's called the Aoki uh, Malt Reserve. And I couldn't help myself, so I got myself a nice... <laughs> Okay, and look at these veggies too. We've got this beautiful, um, I just love how colorful their food, food is. And even on the inside of the restaurant, it's so pretty. They have all of these different colors and everything that he brought back, Kevin brought back, was from Asia. So you feel like you're being transported. <laughs> This is how you drink good whiskey, by the way, for everybody at home. Don't Ooh. you dare put some water in here. This is authentic Kentucky right. whiskey. Tell me how it is. That is smooth. Is it? That is smooth and delicious. Now, again, all of this stuff is available for takeout. It's more important than ever. Support our local restaurants. Kanoi actually got to go and check it out in person. So once we're able to do that again, we can't wait to do that, but check it out. If you're into experience and amazing food, this is the place you want to check out. 1938 Indochine. It's inspired by Southeast Asian street food, but redefined with modern and sophisticated flavors. When you come into 1938, you're going to feel like being transported in a small little street in Southeast Asia. So 1938 was kind of a defining year where the French colonized in Southeast Asia and put their influence on their architecture, their culture, and their food. The French coined that area as Indochine. So the bones here are French design and it's layered with you know, Asian decadence, Vietnamese colors, Chinese colors. We really want to bring that authenticity to you here. For outside, we have over 2,000 square feet of seating. So you almost feel like you're on a street market in Southeast Asia. We also offer cigar smoking and hookah smoking. We have a very big whiskey selection, very large bourbon selection. And then we also have an upstairs area where you can bring your group parties. And we have a little private bar up there that we call Room 38. If you go to Southeast Asia, the best food is found on the street. 
because that's where all the mom and pop operators come out and show off their cuisine. The flavors are very rich. They use a lot of fresh ingredients, very healthy for you. At all my restaurants, I try to focus on using gas. It's more efficient. It brings out the rich flavors of our food. It's easier to control the heat, more economical, and it makes our food taste better than using electric. About 15 items on our kitchen menu. And then currently we have this thing called our chef tasting menu, which is a 10 course meal. And every two weeks, we're changing the menu out. Okay, Kevin, this looks amazing. So we have, before you start, you have to make your own sauce. Okay. You spicy? I am a medium oh. girl. This is sweet sauce. Oh yeah. Show you. Ooh, that is spicy. It's good though, I like it. This is our crazy fried rice, oh, and wow. you use the bowl. Three different types of rice in there. Mmm. So you're, you're right, there's like this crunch going on. That's really tasty. And this rice is popular in Burma. The next dish is our imperial roll. Okay. This is kind of a, a sweet fish sauce. That's delicious, and it's light crispy, but then it's also a little bit chewy. I love it. This is our blue crab cake. You know, I would say that more times than not, I've tasted a bad crab cake. This is an amazing crab cake. Wow. Thank you very much. Mm. Well, Kevin, I can't wait to come in and try the rest of your menu because all of this was so delicious. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. All right, we'll have more up about 1938 Indochine on our website, highnowdaily.com. Brought to you by Hawaii Gas. The two most common questions we get asked on this show are, how do you stay so skinny? And what was your favorite thing you ate? We eat a ton of food on the high now. It's crazy. So my secret, let Kainoa eat all the food. I eat all the food, all the time. So when I think back to the best thing that I ate this month, I would have to say guava smoke makes my top three. I grew up partially on Kauai and you get the best smoked meat there. Well, here on Oahu, it's kind of hard. You got to have a friend of a friend of a friend of a hunter. Guava smoked has got it all. They got smoked fish, smoked duck, smoked whatever you want. I didn't know a place could smoke so many different things. Now, their local moko is really where it's at smoked meat patty. It was so delicious. You just head up Kapahulu, you pop in there, get your plate, and it is bomb. Mahi Ai in Hawaiian translates to farmer, and they're doing it right out at Foodland Farms out in Kapolei. They've got a burger there called Hawaii Meats Burger. Oh, the burger. It's like a French onion soup in a bun. This thing's incredible. You've got a toasted potato bun a juicy patty that goes right in the middle, along with some cremini mushroom marmalade. That's right, it comes oozing out of the burger every time you take a bite of it. It's messy, I love it, and it comes with hand-cut fries on the side. It's fantastic. There's one place that I would drive 35 miles to get to, that is SNS Thai at Kamakana Ali'i. For their nam pork fried rice, it is fried crispy. It's just fried rice like you've never had it before, like you've never tasted before. Get these little notes of lime and lemongrass and it's got these bits of pork in it and then you wrap it in the lettuce and you take a bite and it is so juicy. It is so good. Pura Restaurant, they make house-made pastas every single day and I tried their Papadeli mushroom porcini pasta. It is outrageously good. Rich flavor, they've got roasted kale on the top. They even make in-house a ricotta salada that they top it with. If you are a sushi fan, Hihimanu Sushi is the place you gotta check out. You've got beluga and caviar coming from France. Every single piece of sushi that he serves to you, all 18 pieces, just gets better and better. The flavors are all different. It just melts in your mouth. It is so good. Ube in Kalihi, it's a low Filipino bake shop. They got voted best ube two years in a row and their ube cheesecake is a big reason why. It's sweet, it's savory, it's a beautiful texture. As soon as you bite into it, it is so good. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Up next, bring the excitement of the Okinawan Festival in the comfort of home. How you can join in the fun at this year's virtual event when Hi Now returns. Aloha and welcome to Hi Now Weekender. Kanoi Gibson and I are back in the kitchen 
for this edition of Seal of Quality. Saturday, all right. Hanalei well, Taro. Yes, Hanalei Taro can actually help because they are shipping right now to your front door since we can't go to the neighbor island and actually get our Hanalei Poi. Mm -hmm. But I love this because they're actually a sixth generation family farm that embodies that farm to table concept. So you can actually order farm fresh Poi, Kulolo, Taro Mochi Cake, Hanalei Taro Burgers, Cook Taro, and more. Yeah, and all you have to do is order online at HanaleiTaro.com weekly by Sunday at midnight so that your order can be harvested and shipped by Wednesday. Oh. Now, they'll also have to harvest and they also can harvest and deliver across the U.S. So you can even gift Hanalei Taro brand products to people in the mainland. I cool. love that. Well, speaking of gifting products, they've actually gifted us some products today. And so I am ready to receive. Now, let me tell you something. Hanalei Poi is actually the best. And yeah. it is the most amazing baby food, too. I actually froze this stuff for my kids oh. in little ice cubes. And then you defrost it, so just a little bit. There you for go. when you oh, have kids. Yes. Okay, anyway, but it is really the best poi. Super fresh, mm -hmm. so good. So we have Kulolo here, which <laughs> obviously Kauai is known for their uh, Kulolo, and then a taro mochi cake. Yeah, and like the rice. best part about this too is uh, obviously the poi and all the stuff that they do, but they also give a lot back to the community. They do tours over there on Kauai as well oh. to educate Keiki and Kupuna about, you know, all the awesome farming that takes place on the Garden Isle, mm. and they're able to educate the Keiki, which is always a good thing. I love that super sweet okay there's something about Kauai mm. with uh, being able to grow taro right mm. so Hanalei is where it's at I think it's all that moisture that they That's get down cool. there how is it is it so good so I'm gonna try okay then of course is it on here there it is the mm. little green seal of quality from the um, Department of Agriculture. This is as real and as good as it gets exactly it's Hawaii made Hawaii grown premium products those are the kinds of products that you want to pick up if you want to support local mm -hmm. and make sure that it's genuine. No one's going to fake you out with these um, green seal of quality. That's right. And what's really unique about mm. Taro, I think, is just how far it's come. I mean, we're eating a Taro mochi cake. There's Taro burgers. Oh. There's Taro smooth. There's so many unique ways that you can cook and eat Taro. And I just found out you can do this baby food, too. Yeah, and I didn't hear anything you just said because this Taro mochi <laughs> cake is so good. Isn't that delicious? That's amazing. It's so chewy. How do you make this? It's like a it's like a chewy banana bread without the Give bananas. Give her two weeks, she'll make it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so anyway, if you do sell or make mm. any kind of products that are local and you want to find out how you can get that lovely green seal of quality on your products, you can check it out <laughs> on our website. I enjoyed mine. We have all the information up on highnowdaily.com. Hanaho, I'm ready. Ooh. Friday, September 4th is the first ever virtual Okinawan festival and it'll begin with a webinar in partnership with the UH Manoa Center for Okinawan Studies celebrating the 120th anniversary of Okinawan immigration to Hawaii. This year, the Hawaii United Okinawan Association is really excited to bring the first virtual Okinawan festival to Hawaii. I mean, this is a big project that we just started planning in May, like many events, the Okinawan Festival has had to pivot and change, you know, adjust to a new, a new normal. And so we had to really envision what a virtual festival would even look like. We're packing in a lot. The live show kicks off on Saturday and Sunday, September 5th and 6th. Uh, we're going from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday with a live show to bring a lot of the local performing arts groups. We've got videos from all of our club members. We got cooking demos. We have a lot of musical performances from special international guests. Because we aren't able to sell food this year like we normally do, many of our Okinawan restaurants are stepping up and offering Okinawan food this weekend so people can do takeout. Pagoda Restaurant partnered with Aloha Awamori to sell andagi, imo choco andagi, soki soba, and taco rice. But a lot of different restaurants, Hidechan, Utage, they're all, you know, trying their best to keep their doors open. And of course, Rainbow Drive-In has been a huge supporter of us this year. And so we're, we're encouraging our community to go out there and just, you know, grab some takeout and you can watch our virtual uh, Okinawa Festival from home. We got a lot of questions about, are you guys selling t-shirts this year? And the answer is yes. This online store that, that we had planned, it kind of forced us into making this. We had planned this for a while. But uh, right now, because of the situation, we had to actually do it. They're doing an awesome job. We have our Hawaii United Okinawa Association face mask. You can buy online. 
we have our bon dance towels. Our 2020 theme is ukaji de biru, which means、uh, if you're translated in Japanese, it's okage sama de, means because I am what I am because of you. And then our festival t shirt. In honor of 2020 and all the mask wearing, <laughs> we have our shisa distancing. All of that will be is on our online store this year so that we can keep our community safe but still try and offer some of the you know, things that they, they know and love about the festival. The easiest way to find us is by going to okinawanfestival.com. You'll also be able to watch everything there.、Uh, we'll be embedding the YouTube link there. We'll be doing the online marketplaces where you can also find that on the okinawanfestival.com. Brought to you by Hawaii United Okinawa Association. Coming up. We're taking a walk back in history and climbing on board the amphibious PBY. Talking story with the pilots to see what her role was in World War II. Welcome back. Iolani Palace was the home of Hawaii's last reigning monarchs, including Queen Lilio Okalani. And today, many visit the historic landmark、uh, to experience the culture and the history. So, here to tell us more all about it is Paula Akana, Executive Director of the Friends of Iolani Palace. Aloha, Paula. How are you? Hi, Aloha Kainoa. Thanks、good. for letting me be here. Good to see you.、Oh, good to see I you. I heard、too. you were coming in and I begged to interview you. So, I'm so <laughs> happy that, that you're here.、Uh, tell us a little bit about the history of Iolani Palace. We、well, you know Iolani Palace is, is a Vahipa. On a very special sacred place. It's not the first Iolani Palace. There was a wooden structure there before that、um, that had many of the Kamehameha and、uh, Kamehameha the third, the fourth, the fifth, and Luna Lilo and, um, and um, Kalakaua. And then, as we've seen so many times in Hawaii, ground termites got to it <laughs> and it was just in really bad shape. So he set out to build a palace. And really, the palace is a reflection on the tour that he took around the world. as The first monarch to circumnavigate the globe. And he saw these beautiful palaces that belonged to very modern countries and, and modern nations. And so that's what he wanted. He wanted a representation of, of what the Hawaiian kingdom was. And so Iolani Palace opened in 1882. And you know, we've known things like electricity four years before the White House, right? It had running water, he had a telephone, you know, and just so many wonderful things.、Um, but it tells so many different stories. Just in that short period of time、um, leading up to the overthrow and including the overthrow, and then all the way through statehood, there's just so many stories that, that are told as you walk through those doors. Absolutely, I've been there. It's a very special place. And the Kiki Hula Hoike event, obviously, it's an honor. It's named after Queen Lilio Kalani. Talk about her relationship with the Kiki. Well, first of all, when it comes to Hula, right, her, she was such a beautiful composer. And so her songs and her chants. Uh, make for so many wonderful hula and, and、um, oli as well. But our queen didn't have any children of her own, but they hanaied three children, and she loved Keiki. And there's so many wonderful stories about, about the queen and Keiki. She had a tortoise that she would let the kids come and play with.、Uh, when she was at Washington Place, they would play baseball next door.、Um, there were schools next door. And one day, the story is told that the ball went over into the queen's. Property. So, game over, everybody scrams, right? <laughs>、yeah. But、um, the one young boy knew the queen and the family, so he came in properly through the front gate and walked up to get the ball. And she's like, Why don't you just jump over the fence? <laughs> and from then on, they just jumped over the fence to get her ball. But she also did other things. She、uh, sponsored the second Girl Scout troop in Hawaii shortly before she passed away. And earlier than that, she had been driving through,、um, I believe it was Waikiki area, and she saw some. Boys kind of doing what looked like military you know,、uh, excursions. And so she asked what it was, and it was a Boy Scout troop. And she says, Do you have a flag? And they're like, No. And so she made a flag. Like she,、oh, sewed, she sewed the flag、um, that had uh, uh, Onipa'a on it, and they became the queen's own, basically. And so she really, really loved children. And that's what I really love about Keiki Hula. Is because it's, it's a learning experience for so many of our dancers because they kind of deep dive into who the queen was and everything she represents to so many people on so many levels. Well, mahalo so much for being here. And for all of you at home, this whole segment will be up on highnowdaily.com. Make sure you check it out and get educated about the Iolani Palace and everything that it has to offer. Brought to you by Dawson. 
What an honor it was to chat with Paula Kana about Iolani Palace and its connection to Queen Liliu Kalani. In fact, this past week, September 2nd, actually marked the Queen's birthday, so haole laha now to our Queen. That's right. A lot of history on that day. Now, since September 2nd also marks the 75th commemoration of the end of World War II. Now, when the war formally came to an end during the surrender ceremony on board the USS Missouri. Now, 14 iconic World War II warbirds arrived in Honolulu as part of the commemoration to take part in several Legacy of Peace aerial parades. It looked fantastic, and in fact, Kanoi was actually brave <laughs> enough to hop in one of those vintage aircrafts for what looked like the flight of a life. Yeah, of course I was, and it wasn't your average landing. Take a look. Today, we're taking a walk back in history and climbing on board the amphibious PBY. Talking story with the pilots to see what her role was in World War II. PBY was a patrol bomber, uh, hence PB. Y is for Yankee, the constructor. This is a 5A, so it's the fifth in the series. It's an amphibian. It was used for search and rescue, aerial bombardment, anti-shipping, anti-submarine. It was uh, active in every uh, front uh, during the war and uh, for every country on the uh, Allied side. And it's had so many different vocations. Uh, this particular airplane was a uh, water bomber in Canada. And, and this particular airplane was Royal Canadian Air Force. It was with 162 Squadron. And in 1945, in April, it sunk U-342 off the coast of Iceland. So this airplane actually has a submarine to its credit. So I grabbed my pilot husband, knowing he'd be even more thrilled than me to take the flight on this iconic warbird. Here we go. We don our life vests. All right, safety first. Wheels up, en route to Kaneohe Bay. This airplane is painted to represent an airplane that was based at Kaneohe Bay out of VP-14. We got to take off out of Pearl Harbor, which was absolutely amazing. Flying lower than your typical flight, the bird's eye view of Oahu is spectacular. Especially when you have a 180 degree advantage. 20 minutes later, the moment we've all been waiting for. Touchdown. You got to land on Kaneohe Bay which was a, a major PBY base in World War II. That was a thrill. And just like that, we're airborne once again and heading home. And of course, the reason to do it all is that uh, there's so much history involved in this airplane. It's so important to so many people and our veterans. We're losing them every day, but there's still, still guys that really sacrificed a lot to, for the country and to do it with this aircraft. Now it's pretty much a, a flying history museum. We're participating in the aerial parade for the 75th commemoration of the end of World War II. We'll be flying over Pearl Harbor, Arizona, and Missouri as a, a salute to the veterans that are still alive and especially the ones that uh, didn't make it. And today we captured just a tiny part of their spirit. It was definitely the flight of a lifetime. Brought to you by the 75th commemoration of the end of World War II. Oh, now, Kanoa, I know you and your husband are very well traveled, but how was that flying experience? Well, I mean, you know, he's a pilot. I was a former flight attendant. It's definitely not like your typical commercial flights. That's for sure. There's no coffee in Pog. But, I mean, like I was saying, you know, we fly a lot lower and it's a little bit bumpy, so definitely not for the faint of heart. And, I mean, but it was incredible. It was just a neat experience, you know, having that bubble sitting in that and getting this, like, aerial view of Oahu. And, yeah, how were the views? Oh, it was so beautiful. You know, and we got to fly right over Diamond Head. I mean, I could have I could have told you who was hiking that day if there were people <laughs> hiking. And uh, yeah, it was really neat. And the, being able to land in Kaneohe Bay, that was just insane. That's so, amazing. Loved it. And of course, a big mahalo to the 75th World War II commemoration for allowing us to even be a part of this historic time. Coming up hand cut and dried with Aloha. How you can get your hands on these ahi jerkies from Punahele, Hawaii. Details when High Now returns.
Welcome back to High Note Weekender. It's time for another edition of Check Out and Take Out. That's right. And remember, with Check Out and Take Out on HawaiiNewsNow.com, you can always find out what restaurants and businesses are open in your community. First up, it's our friends over at Tea Presso Bar. Now, next time you're at Tea Presso to satisfy your boba craving, be sure to pick up some of their new new ube crinkle yeah. cut cookies and ube pande sol. It's all yeah. baked fresh daily. The crinkle cookies are now available at all their locations and the pande sol will be coming soon next week. Now, these are sure to go perfectly with an ube latte, a boba tea, and our exclusive high now drinks. Make sure you check out Kanoi's K-Presso and my new KC cooler for all the brothers who are sweating all day long. <laughs> Tea Presso will continue to operate as a grab-and-go facility for now, so you can order your drinks online and pick them up curbside. Very convenient. Next up, if you're looking for something to eat this weekend, why not pick up some Korean fried chicken from Kickin' Chicken at Kamakana oh, oh, oh. You can also pick up other popular Korean street foods, including corn dogs, cheese dogs, chicken sticks, and even sweet corn and shrimp sticks. That sounds like a fun time. Right? The Korean-style corn dog has been becoming pretty popular here in Hawaii, and the snack is covered with sugar, and for the full experience, Experience, be sure to put sweet mustard and ketchup on top. Sweet mustard. Okay, you can get just the hot dog, just cheese, or get a hot dog and cheese mix. But the most popular item on the menu is the garlic shoyu chicken, mm. which is served in 10 or 20 piece boxes. And Kickin' Chicken also offers chicken plates, which comes with seven pieces of chicken, two scoops of rice, and your choice of pickled radish or coleslaw. On them. And finally, with keeping healthy at the top of everyone's minds these days, Aloha Island Mart is offering some cool items to help keep you safe. Now, they've got a germ-free key. It's a handy tool to keep up uh, and to stop you from touching buttons or other things in public. They also got different kits packed with masks, gloves, antibacterial hand gel and antiseptic wipes, all the stuff that you'll need. You can even find PPE at I Aloha Island March. They've got adult and children's face shields. They've got masks, they've got carbon filter mask inserts as well. So if you're looking for something fun to do with the family while staying home and staying safe, you can pick up some s'mores maker kits. Ooh. Love those, they're perfect for the holiday weekend. And to find out more information about these businesses and products, just head to check out and take out section on hawaiinewsnow.com. Punahele Hawaii tuna jerkies are hand cut, seasoned to flavor, and machine dried to perfection. The local company only uses premium quality product with no MSGs to guarantee great taste and a great experience every time you bite into one. Realizing that we're actually the largest consumer of tuna, in probably the United States per capita, we really wanted to come out with a snack that was gonna be there for everybody from Hawaii and maybe out to the mainland to enjoy the dried fish side from Hawaii. That's how we came out with, with Punahele, which means favorite. Kilo Fish Company was basically started the mid 80s through my father because um, back then on the big island of Hawaii, we had a local fishery. And at that time, we were fortunate enough in the mid 80s to be a part of that. And with that local tuna fishery every summer, we started Hilo Fish Company full time in 1994. Our company has been expanding ourselves throughout the world. And Punahele started when we were really looking at trying to do dried aku and um, different products to expand and create more jobs here on the Big Island. Our popular items that we're currently marketing with Punahele has been the teriyaki, which is the local favorite, right? And a Maui onion flavor. You know, we have also a garlic flavor. We have four current flavors now, and I think the last one was black pepper. We have had such wonderful feedback, positive feedback from whoever's tried it so far and looking forward to many more comments posted on our Instagram page and our Facebook. We all grew up at some point eating poke, eating sashimi, which we're very fortunate to do that. You know, many places in the United States can have no access to tuna. So because of our history in tuna, you know, we wanted to stick to something that could, you know, not replace, but could be a different product other than beef jerky. You know, you see, hundreds of beef jerky, dried jerkies out there. And why not tuna? You know, a little bit more healthy. The texture and the consistency of the product is close to beef, yet it's softer. We're probably gonna add a, a taco skipjack or locally called aku 
you know, dried aku in, in the Punahele brand. So for more, more information about Punahele Hawaii, continuously look at our sites for up, our website for update, punahelehawaii.com. You know, and for social media updates, please check out our Instagram at punahele.hawaii and also Facebook, Punahele Hawaii. Brought to you by Punahele Hawaii. Next up, some call it the natural facelift. Details on the treatment from the experts at Elite Health Hawaii. We'll be right back. If you live near central Oahu and you're in need of a primary care doctor, the University Health Partners of Hawaii has a new family medicine clinic near Pearl Ridge. It offers comprehensive care where everyone from baby to grandparents can get all of their health needs met. Family medicine, we're all about the family, which means we care about you, we care about the people in your family, your kids, your mom and dad. Mom, um, do you have any concerns about or thoughts about her going back to school? Do you feel safe? We see people when they're healthy and we want to keep them that way. So we'll talk about uh, cancer screening prevention. We'll talk about immunizations. And we see people when they're the most vulnerable, when they're sick, when they've got diabetes and high blood pressure and there's a lot going in their lives. It's all about the relationship. The medicine is what we're trained in, but the reason why we come into work every day is because of the people we sit across from and we know we want to be there for them. And they teach us plenty too as well. We are right across from Polymomi, but we're in a completely brand new clinic. It's the University Health Partners Family Medicine Clinic. We do imaging tests, anything we need, COVID testing. We're set up with telehealth. We're happy to take care of people by phone with a single phone call or video visits. We found that it's actually pretty simple and, and people like it and they feel safe if they don't need to come in. When somebody's really sick or we really need to see them in person, we are there for them. We're set up with all the physical distancing. We have terrific rooms. When people need to come in, we can do it right for them. And with telehealth, we can actually serve pretty much anybody island-wide or even on other islands. And that's been part of our mission is really to be here for people. So we were previously in Milani. A lot of our patients have followed us and it's been our honor to keep serving them. We're really accessible. We've been accepting patients. Um, we'll even take a new patient by telehealth visits. And the best part is we work with a lot of specialists as well. If you need heart doctors, kidney doctors, we've been working with them for a long time. We also do good mental health. You know, there's a lot of stress right now and there's um, people who need help with, you know, emotions, with dealing with the stress. None of us expected this, right? None of us expected the pandemic, how it affected us, how it affected our family. But the chance to be a doctor at this point or to be a healthcare provider or part of a team to take care of people, to be there for a community, this is why we're here. And if you need more information, just visit us on our website at uhbhawaii.org. This segment is sponsored by University Health Partners of Hawaii and the John A. Burns School of Medicine. There's several things that happen to our face as we age. Uh, we lose volume in our faces as we age, so we lose our cheekbones, we lose the fat pads, and then our skin gets thinner. Our breakdown of collagen and elastin starts to outpace the building of it once we turn, you know, get into our 20s, so it starts to decrease at that point. And so we have something in our clinic to try to address each of these issues. So we can revolumize the face with some of our dermal fillers, things like that. And then for the thinning of the skin and the sagging of the skin, that's what we use the Pixel 8 RF for. We chose Pixel 8 specifically for Hawaii because with some of the other things out there, like lasers specifically, they can be great for skin tightening. The problem is they can cause some hypo or hyperpigmentation, especially in people who are darker complected. There's very small needles. They just slide down into the dermis. The dermis is where all of your collagen is. Then the heat, the RF, a little burst of energy goes to the tips of the needles and delivers the heat like directly to the dermis, directly to that collagen. And when that heat hits the collagen, those proteins remodel and change a little bit and it causes some nice tightening of the skin. So you can tighten the skin anywhere on the body with the Pixel 8. The face is probably the most popular area and it helps with fine lines, wrinkles. A lot of people see sagging skin on their neck. So we do a lot of necks, decollete is another very popular area. But then I also have women who have maybe stretch marks. It's terrific for acne scars. But basically anything that you would want to do that where you want to remodel that collagen layer and improve your dermis, the Pixel 8 is going to be the answer for that. 
Most people are going to want to do about three to five to start. And then what we recommend is that you do maybe every six months to a year after that. So you'll just always maintain that youthful skin. And it doesn't look like you did like a facelift or something like that. It's not a super dramatic thing like that. It's a nice tightening of the skin that looks very natural. The entire treatment takes about an hour, hour and a half, and there's really no side effects. But people often ask about downtime. After you have this done, you'll be a little bit red, maybe for one to three days. If you're a little darker complected, you may walk out of here looking like almost nothing happened. Just a little bit of redness, like you got a little too much sun. And that's pretty typical uh, with the average complexion in Hawaii is that we're seeing most people, they look like they got a little too much sun. So it takes a little bit of time for that collagen to remodel and to rebuild. It's your collagen, it's remodeling, it's changing, and it takes three to four weeks for that to happen. It's not really going to change somebody's face, it really just kind of walks their face back in time a little bit. For more information about our anti-aging facial treatments, you can contact us at 523-5483, or you can go to our website, EliteHealthHawaii.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. It is at Scott Sanderson, MD, and we are also on Facebook. Brought to you by Elite Health Hawaii. Hey guys, coming up on High Now, find out what my good big buddy here, Ace, can do for you and your family with him and his friends here at the Therapeutic Horsemanship of Hawaii. Don't miss it. Joining us on High Now Weekender. You know, we talk a lot about different ways to cope with stress during these difficult times. And our new series, Mahalo Monday, takes a look at the good being done in our community and shares ways to focus on the positive in our own lives. That's right. And as for a lot of us found out, uh, after being stuck inside for so long, sometimes spending time in nature is a great way to re energize. That's why earlier this month, I took a trip out to Waimanalo to see how horseback riding can help your mind and body. Today on High Now, we're hanging out at Therapeutic Horsemanship of Hawaii, and today I'm getting some good therapy from my boy Ace. So Therapeutic Horsemanship of Hawaii actually started in the early 80s. Now we have close to 100 riders per week, multiple programs running here, and we've, we've been pretty busy and successful. And with animals as stunning as these ones, it's easy to see why. Just the art of saddling up and getting on a horse has tremendous benefits for your body and soul. Therapeutic horsemanship works in a couple different ways. Actually sitting on a horse, the horse's movement will move a human body through a normal walking gait. So for an individual who's never walked, it can be a surprisingly beneficial sensation to get to walk, borrow the horse's legs. It's also been shown that it can improve the gait of people who have maybe impaired walking. Extended time sitting on a horse can, can improve some of the strength and flexibility that's involved in that. And then of course there's the emotional part of it, the sense of accomplishment, the sense of community, Community. Just being on a horse can be really, really powerful. You can use the horse as sort of a partner in getting kids to learn things. So right now we have 10, horse, 10 full-size horses at our facility, eight of which are our lesson horses. Um, we also have the four miniatures. Um, usually our horses tend to be older and retired from some other career that they're not really physically able to um, perform, which makes them great for working with kids because they've had a job, they know what their job is. They're ready to slow down and they're ready to take their time and really share what they have with the kids and the other individuals that ride here. So I gave it a try, saddled up with Ace. Well, I'm a big boy. You'll be all right. Okay. I'm sorry, I ate a big breakfast this morning. <laughs> who didn't judge me for my lack of experience. Lift like this. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. Can I let go of this, man? Yeah. Okay. Please. Down here. Okay, yeah, don't pull on the reins. Just relax. But probably knew I had never rode a horse before. I'll show you how to use those if you'd like to. I'm okay. good. I don't want to pull on it. <laughs> That's for sure. Squeezing, he'll go a little faster. Oh, I don't want to squeeze. That's okay. But after a few laps, I calmed down. Very good. All right, Ace. Felt that clarity Dana had described. And then I want you to kind of think about how, first of all, how he moves your body. And second of all, like kind of what happens in your mind as you're walking. You feel happier? I do. This is just, oh, it's very empowering. Ace and his buddies serve as a good reminder, especially in these times, to slow down and be present in the moment. Hey guys, this really is an experience unlike anything I've ever had. Come down and check them out here. Therapeutic Horsemanship of Hawaii, right here in Waimanalo. We'll have this whole segment up on HainaoDaily.com. Brought to you by Kaiser Permanente Hawaii. 
so good. <laughs> Thank you to Ace and Dana for being so gracious because I was a train wreck. You were funny. <laughs> I was so terrible. I got there, I had some anxiety actually, but it's funny. Throughout the segment, Ace actually calmed me down. So yeah, it did. really does work. I, I Just to let the people out there know, I was there. And so I did <laughs> actually get to witness this whole thing go down. So it was awesome. And of course, if you have a story you'd like to highlight on a future Mahalo Monday segment, share it with us on Facebook or Instagram at High Now Daily. If you're looking to invest in Hawaii real estate, the experts at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Hawaii Realty say now is the time. And here to give us an update on the market is real estate agent Scott Larimer. Aloha. Good morning. Thank, Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's talk about the market. How's it going? Well, we're really still seeing act an active market here in Hawaii. And right now we have low rates. People are reevaluating their home life as well their lifestyle. Those are significant impacts right. right now that we're seeing. There's certainly an increase in work from home scenarios. And as well, there's also a bit of a surge of multi-generational living, which is something we're all fairly accustomed to here in Hawaii. I see it a lot more. Hawaii has traditionally been a consistent long-term investment for appreciation. That's your focus. And even in a lower market, we are seeing properties that aren't moving necessarily, but they are still a good opportunity for the long-term buy. Well, would you say now is a good time to invest if you were thinking about it? So in a changing market, there's always new opportunity. It's ready and it's there for those that are created, for those that are prepared and working with a real estate professional. They're looking at long-term investment strategies. Don't try to time the market. You wanna to stick to the basic fundamentals, principles of investing and how you're going to build and generate wealth for yourself, for your family, over the long term. Okay, so if you were to give advice to someone who's considering it, what would that be? I can't provide specific examples of what properties are best to go in and buy right now, because I look at each buyer, each client, each seller, as a unique individual, a unique family or party, as to what their capabilities are, what are their financial means, what are their uh, limits, what are their goals? We structure a plan of what is going to be the right property for them or properties, the right times for sale for them, and what's going to give them the best strength in leveraging themselves so they're ready. Make sure we've got your team ready to go. That's your tax advisor, that's your, you know, your accountant, uh, your mortgage lender, your loan officer. These are very important parts as well as your qualified, experienced real estate agent. Okay, well, Scott, thank you very much for these tips and advice, and uh, we'll have more information up on our website. Experience matters when buying or selling a home, and Scott Larimer is dedicated to partnering with his clients to achieve their real estate goals. With 12 years serving Oahu, Scott is a trusted advisor, creative marketer, strategic negotiator, and results-driven agent. Working on both sides as a buyer's representative and a listing agent, he's knowledgeable in sales across Oahu. Whether it's looking for an investment or selling a multi-million dollar property, contact Scott Larimer today. Brought to you by Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Hawaii Realty. Still ahead, brunch fans, listen up. We're checking out Egghead Cafe's delicious and Instagram-worthy dishes. See what's on the menu when High Now returns. Brunch fans, listen up. Egghead Cafe has easily become one of the top picks here on Oahu with its modern vibe and its Instagram-worthy food. Got it. Egghead Cafe started at, on 2015, original location on Queen Street near Kaka'ako. We, we shut down for about a year and we reopened on January 2020. We have a lot of loyal customers. Once they know we reopened back on this location, they about to start coming back. Water out. But once March, unfortunately, we slowed down a bit. People are still getting comfortable to coming back and eat. Egghead is known for eggs. The Benedict and omelets are always a, a top popular items. We have so many different flavor of pancakes, strawberry, macadamia nut pancake, Hawaiian pancake made with ube. Uh, most popular one is a tiramisu pancake. Put a mac nut latte, please. Also, the coffee is, is fresh roast locally weekly, so it's always tastes uh, so fresh, our coffee. Thank you. 
The gas is so important to us. First, without the gas, we can't cook. It's so much more stable, steady. Things cook so much faster than electric. We might have cooking rice and then the microwave running at the same time. The breaker will trip. The gas will never have that happen. Always running, always running. We even have water heater using gas. Now, always have water, never run out. Yeah, much more affordable than electric. The bill is so much cheaper. Everyone is struggling right now, but uh, safety is most important for everyone, for the customer and also our employees. They have to have masks before they enter. We ask COVID-19 health-related questions and also temperature check. Uh, we change all the dining ware to single-use disposal products, double sanitize the table every time customer leaves. Every 20 minutes, we have to uh, wipe down all the doors and public areas. Our employees have to wear face masks at all times so they can have uh, more protection on themselves. We have one side as dine-in and then another side for, for takeout and for cafe as a more casual service, grab a cup of coffee and we have some fresh baked pastries. And now it's perfect with the COVID-19. We kind of separated all the takeout customer on one side and all the dining on one side. But now on the weekend, we also open up this side because we got limited seating. So kind of make up those seatings as well. We want to keep the Aloha and uh, emphasize Aloha spirit to treat others well and all of us be friendly to our customers. So we, we always use this slogan, Let's Aloha. Many want people to be just feel comfortable dining in, feel relaxed. That's what our goal is. Brought to you by Hawaii Gas. You know, we always talk about our producer, Rachel. Well, she was the one who was dining and with me so there. And she is well known there at Egghead. I mean, oh. they already knew her order. They knew what she liked. They knew, they're like asking where her friends were that she normally goes there with. Oh, so awesome. if you want to know who Rachel is, rewind, go check her out because she is amazing and she's always here with us and doing stuff for she's us. She's awesome. So, Shout out to Rachel. Me. All right. Well, of course, you know, holiday weekends, it, brunches where it's at. So go get yourself some takeout and enjoy. Definitely. And you know, I got to check out Fuki. It's a new Taiwanese restaurant in Aiea. They're actually the same owners uh, as Egghead Cafe. So I've been, I just went out there recently. You don't want to miss this segment. It is fantastic. For all you boba drinkers, quick hint, they fly boba from Taiwan Ooh. all the way out here just for the boba drink. That's okay. how good it is. It's okay. authentic. I'm going to check it out. Well, mahalo for you, uh, to you for watching Hi Now. Remember, catch all of our segments again on HiNowDaily.com. Be sure to follow us at Hi Now Daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube as well. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Now, next week, seafood lovers. Kickin' Cajun is on the windward side, so we get a look at what's new on the menu. Plus, some hot pot to warm the soul. See how you can customize your meal to fit any craving at Hot Pot Heaven. We'll see everyone on Monday morning. Bye now. Aloha.